from the studios of Tucson Business Radio X, recorded in the Stewart Title Corporate Offices on Broadway. You are now listening to The Mark Bishop Show. And now here's your host, Mark Bishop. And welcome to another Mark Bishop Show. You know, IBM Technology, they're promoting food safety in ways you wouldn't believe. In honor of the World Food Safety Day, which is this Sunday, new technologies are revolutionizing the food supply chain. And what companies are joining the Food Trust to provide transparency to consumers and producers? This is a pretty important story. Have you ever fell ill? I have, and is uh, well, the stats are pretty high, but we're going to find out. Suzanne Livingston is the director of the IBM Food Trust Network. Welcome, Suzanne. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. World Food Safety Day. It's on this Sunday, June 7th, and uh, it was created by the World Health Organization, who, to draw attention and inspire action to help prevent detect and manage foodborne risks and other challenges impacting global food safety. Now, uh, one thing many don't realize is how common foodborne illnesses are. In fact, the WHO estimates that one in 10 people, one in 10, fall ill due to foodborne diseases each year. Uh, They're scary numbers, Suzanne. Absolutely. And it's making consumers lose trust in food. They don't know if their food is safe to eat and they are uh, scared. Should I buy this product or not? That's really the heart of why we created the Food Trust Network. I help reduce these food safety incidents and get food out of the stores and restaurants in record time during an incident. Mm. Okay, so tell us how IBM has found new ways to apply technology to add traceability to the food supply chain, because this is where a lot of the issues are, right? This is to combat foodborne illness, reduce food waste, and solve other challenges with the global food supply chain. How are they doing it? That's right. Traceability is uh, such an important part of the picture. Um, In order for us to really know where food product is coming from, we have to have full end-to-end traceability. And there's been you know, many technologies in traceability over the decades. Um, the limitation, though, is that many of these um, companies who are using traceability tools have visibility only from who they've bought and who they're selling to, one step up and one step down. Mm-hmm. And in a food safety incident, you really need to see the full journey. Where did it come from and where has it been transformed into another product? And where will those where do those products sit in the shelves of grocery stores or in warehouses or in restaurants. So we um, we said, what is preventing companies from sharing this data? Well, it's trust. They don't trust that other companies will use the data um, for good and also that they will um, be able to retain ownership of their own data. So that's where blockchain really comes into play and made it a new paradigm for uh, data sharing and transparency. Mm. Blockchain, huh? Well, as soon as you said that, straight away I start thinking of cryptocurrency. <laughs> I guess we all, you know, would be doing <laughs> that for that. And now we're talking about food, you know. <laughs> uh, I you're mean, not alone in that. Right, right. Well, you know, we don't know what we're eating in some cases. It's pretty scary. We have to trust. You just take for granted what we've bought who we bought it from, but this is amazing because what you're really saying is you're going to be able to, I think in the research here, you give an example about some Norwegian salmon, right? Tell us about that. Yeah, that's right. Um, Let me uh, um, just make the link for listeners who may not understand why blockchain um, is helpful in this case too, because you know, like you said, many people think cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, uh, that's uh, one realm of blockchain. But the other realm of it is uh, tracking transactions that are related to uh, the transfer of any good. It doesn't have to be uh, money. And that's what we're doing is we're having each party share data about the transfer and condition uh, and uh, locations of the food products. One of the companies that um, is uh, uh, joining the system and has their uh, product available at Whole Foods right now um, is Quarry Arctic. And Quarry is a, a salmon producer. Um, they have a uh, invested in very high quality uh, salmon feed. 
Uh, they invest in great practices, and they want consumers to know when you're buying a salmon product at Whole Foods that it's theirs and also share with consumers like video and information about uh, the practice and the uh, harvesting process. Hmm. And that's oh, the whole journey from Norway to the U.S. Wow. Uh, the others are going to have to fall into line, aren't they? Yes, absolutely. Like we're seeing so much more demand for consumer traceability. Uh, one of our clients is uh, Carrefour. Uh, they were a major retailer in Europe. And when they added consumer traceability to food products in their stores, they saw an increase in sales um, of those food products. And they're tracing many different products. So they're using our platform for you know, chicken and produce and eggs mm. and milk. Um, like I mentioned, we have um, um, uh, baby food as well. Uh, Nestle is bringing, uh, has baby food and also coffee and um, uh, uh, their own manufactured food products on, um, we have olive oil. It's quite a broad, diverse set of products that are in the system and track. Well, the IBM Food Trust is one of the world's largest uh, non-crypto blockchain networks in production. Uh, today, it has more than, what, 200 participants representing more than 17,000 products. This is from salmon and scallops right through to leafy greens and mashed potatoes. Uh, when did all this launch, Suzanne? And well, we've been uh, working on this for the last three years. Um, back in 2017, uh, we had an initial group of 10 uh, forward-thinking food companies, Dole, Nestle, um, Walmart, who wanted to uh, test and trial that this could work for traceability. And so that's what we did in the 2017 timeframe. Early in the year, we piloted uh, with uh, pork and with um, fruit. And then we moved from that into uh, publicly available uh, products in uh, October of 2018. And since then, we've grown to, like we said, over 200 companies, uh, many uh, different types of food products, and are continuing to see more come on board for consumer traceability in addition to safety. Well, you know, for this layman here, give me, try and give us a bit of an idea so we can understand visually in our theater of the mind while we're on radio. Explain to me what it would look like. How do you make this work, this this blockchain thing with IBM? On what? On these foods? I mean, are we talking stamping or, or, or what? Yeah, so it, first it's really about how we have to trace a record for each one of those food products. And, you know, food products get are complicated. They get combined with others. There's processes that turn them into a, a cooked product, for example. So first and foremost, it's about collecting data. And we needed to create the right environment for companies to trust the system and share that data. So giving them control, ensuring that their data is immutable, and that's what blockchain brings to the table. You can't edit a record. Even if it's my food company and I put a record in there, I can't go back and edit it. I have to submit another record to um, uh, show that there is a correction, for example. So that's the trust level for the platform. And then each company submits their data. They can bring it on board directly from um, sensor devices, from uh, uh, systems that record their food transactions. Mm -hmm. um, even those who don't have systems, like a small farm, can just go online and upload data directly into the tool. And then comes the QR code part of it. Once that final product is created, a QR code is uh, typically put on the packaging. And that QR code references uh, unique characteristics about it, a lot number, a date, um, a product ID. And that is what, when you scan that QR code, uh, it's behind the scenes launching that data from the QR code into our system and searching for the unique, uh, 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 unique journey, the unique trace for it mm. and displaying that back to you on your phone. God, amazing. Supply chain visibility. I guess this really strengthens the consumer relationship, doesn't it? From, you know, like from the farm to the store. You know what I mean? Exactly. Consumers don't trust that uh, the labels on food products, you know, one in, in five labels for seafood is wrong. Really? Um, either intentionally or unintentionally. And consumers know this and they say, you know, I'm not going to buy these products if they're not uh, represented properly. So, that's really where we see a lot of um, demand for, I want my food products to be traceable to buy them and companies wanting who are who have the practices they want to share, they are coming on board to share that. 
Gee, we've come a long way from uh, back in my day, you know, in my country, Australia. Then it was like if you've made it in Australia, you bought the thing. You know, made in America, supported. And now I can see it's going to be, hey, has it been blockchain? Do we know where it's come from? Otherwise, I'm not coming near it, right? That's where it's going. That's the idea. And we have already seen change in patterns of behavior with uh, consumers who want traceability and will buy more. Uh, well, so what do you think? What's next for this technology? Tell me. Um, well, right now we are um, bringing out a, a easier way for companies to share um, their data with consumers. Uh, so you're going to see a lot more um, consumer traceability uh, when you go into stores with QR codes or with other um, uh, unique identifiers. And for companies who are food companies who are affected by um, the COVID-19 crisis, we have a free trial to our document module, which allows them to share uh, certifications um, with new suppliers. And that's until August 20th. So they can find a new uh, buyer or suppliers uh, or a new supplier quickly and learn uh, if they have the right practices and also the right documentation to support being a supplier of that food product. Hmm. All right. So from a consumer point of view and also from uh, perhaps a uh, developer, manufacturer, a breeder, whatever, uh, is there a site that people can go to to understand this better, read more? Uh, yeah, the best place to go is IBM.com forward slash food. And that's where they can learn more about the um, product, see a demonstration of it, and also see what clients of ours are doing with the platform. Your position, you know, as the director of this IBM Food Trust Network, do you go to companies or are they starting to search you out? I will say at first we had a lot of, of outreach because blockchain, you know, just like we said at the beginning, it was typically thought of with cryptocurrency. Um, now I will say we also see a tremendous amount of companies coming to us, um, smaller too, even small brands, um, raw seafoods, for example, in New Bedford. Uh, wanting to make sure that uh, consumers knew that their food product um, is safe and also when it was harvested and pure in a restaurant. So um, mm. we, a lot more that are coming to us uh, um, and wanting to share their brand information with um, their supply chain. So tell me something, a little left field here for you, seeing you're in the food game from a point of view of knowing who does what and where. Who's got the best oysters and where do they come from in America? Oh, well, I am from Massachusetts, and uh, I am partial to the, the Wellfleet oysters. Are they a nice size? <laughs> Depends. Uh, but, yes, they're very good. I suggest giving them a try if you find them on the menu, although I did have oysters in Australia once, and those were quite delicious. So, uh -huh. uh, they would I, have been, I have to say. They would have been the Sydney both. Rock oysters. They're as big as a car. <laughs> Aren't they? They're huge. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that's talking getting your money's worth on a shell. I hate those squiddly little things that are stuck in a shell. You're paying serious dough for it. Not go for that. Well, Suzanne, very interesting. <laughs> Suzanne Livingston, ladies and gentlemen, the director of of the IBM Food Trust Network helping us stay healthy. This is a wonderful thing down the track. This one in 10 is ridiculous with food being ill. Maybe it'll blow out to one in a thousand, more to the point. Thanks for all the work you're doing, Suzanne. Thank you for having me. It was a pleasure. Okay. Suzanne Livingston, again, the director of the IBM Food Trust Network here on the Business Radio X Network.